Alrighty, we are back and welcome to The Blue Room, where we analyze two fighters, breaking down their strengths, their weaknesses, and their keys to victory. And today we're going to be breaking down a fight going down this weekend, where we have the undisputed lightweight champion, Devin Haney, going up against the former unified lightweight champion and three division world champion, Vasily Lomachenko. Now we're only a few days away. The bout is taking place on the 20th of May. Guys, I am so looking forward to this fight. Both these guys are top of the food chain, high caliber technicians. Devin Haney is the respectable young dog. I've always respected how he conducts himself outside of the ring, especially when taken out of his comfort zone, you know? In his last two fights, he had to travel around the world whilst cutting weight to fight Cambosis, who had a lot of hype behind him at the time, and Haney was able to come out victorious. And on the flip side, then we have Vasily Lomachenko, who, by the way, has one of the most successful amateur boxing records of all time. 396 wins and one loss, and consider that he avenged that loss as well. But what makes Lomachenko so special is that he's a specialist in movement, training in sambo, judo, and wrestling since he was a kid. Now, it seems the main talking points from fight fans are in regards to Vasily Lomachenko's age. Have his skills diminished in any way? You know, Haney's just coming off a confidence-boosting win. And let's face it, he's the young dog. So from a psychological standpoint, will Haney's momentum give him the upper hand? Then, of course, we've got those discussing Haney's size. He's gigantic. Look at the size of his head. So let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Devin Haney Haney is the champion, Vasily Lomachenko is the challenger. So Devin Haney comes in with 28 wins and no losses. Lomachenko has 16 professional wins and two losses. So Haney stands at five foot nine. Lomachenko, depending on the source, is either five foot six or five seven. But come on guys, looking at that picture, we know. There's a larger margin between them than two inches. Haney has a reach of 71 inches. Lomachenko 65 inches. So Haney has a six inch reach advantage. Haney is in his prime, he's only 24 years old. Whilst Lomachenko is 30. 35, and in terms of stance, Haney stands in the traditional orthodox. Lomachenko primarily stands in southpaw, but has the ability to switch to orthodox. So keeping things relatively objective based on these stats, we can see there's a clear height and reach discrepancy, which is in the favor of Devin Haney. In terms of stance, with Lomachenko being the southpaw, the majority of fighters fight orthodox, so that could be an advantage for Lomachenko. But again, we're just looking at the stats. There is an 11 year age gap between the two, which I personally think favors Lomachenko based on his experience. 35 years old in 2023 should in no way be considered old, especially when you have a fighter who is practically undefeated and implements primarily a elusive style of fighting. So with that being said, the key stats I believe we have to consider here are Haney's height and reach advantage. Let's break down their strengths and weaknesses. And one thing that stands out with Haney is that he's fundamentally sound, both physically and mentally. This is a fighter who sticks with his P's and Q's, the jab and he's not easily swayed by public opinion or a crowd who perhaps want an exciting brawl, something unique, a bit of risk taking. Haney sticks to what works and he's extremely good at that. So fundamentally, he will follow the jab with a cross and as he gets more comfortable in the fight or feels that he can take a few more risks, he'll begin to follow the jab with an overhand hook and the occasional uppercut. Whenever he does find himself on the inside, you'll often see him throw a combination of uppercuts to slowly chip at his opponent's cardio. One thing worth noting is that I've also noticed in a lot of his fights where he ends up in the clinch. Rather than step out, he likes to lean on his opponent and circling out of that clinch position with a beautiful right cross, which I think based on Lomachenko's style, we'll see a lot of this. But I'll get to that when we talk about keys to victory. So in terms of Haney's weaknesses, Haney is at his best when his opponent is fighting on the center line because from there it becomes a competition of who has the better timing, the precision and speed to land the jab. And as the record stands, Haney wins this all day. However, if you watch the rematch of Haney versus Cambosis, you'll notice that Cambosis implemented a style which in the long run didn't work in his favor. However, for the first three rounds, Haney appeared to be taken out of his comfort zone because Cambosis was switching stances, throwing strikes from unusual angles, which by the way was arguably an error of judgment by Cambosis because that style seemed to wear him out after round three. But with that being said, Haney appeared slightly off balance. These three rounds were the rare occasions where he seemed out of his comfort zone. And this was something that I noticed with his opponent, Alfredo Santiago, who he fought a few years back when Santiago would circle strafe defensively, when Haney would follow or to some extent cut off the ring, his feet don't look like they're fully under him. And when throwing shots in those positions, there's occasionally a slight hesitance, again, because he's off balance. So that's just something to consider now that we talk about 
at Lomachenko's strengths as well as his weaknesses. Now, Lomachenko typically starts his fights with a high guard and he'll throw a lot of feints. As I mentioned before, he fights in the southpaw stance and what you see is he often pause. He reaches out with his right, trying to mentally set you up to march to the beat of his drum. And once he feels that he's got you moving to his rhythm, that sets in motion Lomachenko's flow state. He'll often throw combinations with a slight pause in between. You know, other fighters throwing a combination you'll hear bum 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 with Lomachenko you'll hear bum ba bum bum he often breaks his opponents mentally in the early rounds to where they just become a spectacle for him to tee off on now I say all of that to say that I think Lomachenko's biggest strength is his ability to mentally manipulate his opponents I mean even when he's winning a match and he's turning to the referee signaling for him to stop the fight to spare his opponent from getting beaten up imagine what that does to his opponent's confidence now very rarely will you see Lomachenko as a stationary target relative to the strike being thrown at him he will circle far out to the left or to the right as his way to tell his opponent you can't hit me but when Loma is on the offensive he'll stay just outside of the pocket on the center line setting up an angle of attack and really depending on the reads that he's got sometimes he'll stay in the pocket and his opponent will shell up sort of overthinking what is Loma gonna throw at me next or on the occasion where his opponent gets frustrated lashing out with a hook Loma just circles out of the way now in terms of Loma's weaknesses this is a really tough one to call. I rewatched his fight with Teofimo Lopez. On the first watch, I had Lopez winning. But when you really pay attention to the shots being landed, Lomachenko was actually defensively sound in that fight. And despite his decline in the later rounds, I actually had the fight in Loma's favor, or at the least a draw. So why was Lopez able to find so much success? It was a chess match and Lopez rised to the occasion. And it seemed in all honesty that Lopez was learning on the fly. He would see Loma do feints and then he'd mimic those feints and he'd find success. When it came to Lopez's right straight, he would target Loma's chest and angle the shot to the left because Loma was circling off to the right. But then again, a lot of those shots were blocked. You could also consider that Lopez was a big opponent in terms of size and he was often on the offense, tagging Loma to the body and disrupting Loma's rhythm to where in the later rounds, he was able to land up top and it felt like Loma was hesitant of his power, specifically the right straight. So if we're talking in terms of weaknesses, it appears that if you're able to break Lomachenko's rhythm with shots to the midsection as he circles out and you possess a larger frame which you can utilize to your advantage, then as Loma's opponent, you might have success riding out a split decision. So the keys to victory for Devin Haney, number one would be adaptation. We know he's a jab first fighter and we can't expect him to improve on his lateral movement in such a short space of time. So I think he needs to employ a strategy where he's slightly offbeat with his combinations using his range in the early rounds to throw a lot of feints, jabs to Loma's shoulders, his chest, as Loma closes in trying to find angles and frustrating him on the outside. If he can then deter Lomachenko from finding his flow state in the early rounds, then Devin Haney can go back to the fundamentals in the later rounds. I really think speed is going to be a key to Haney's victory in this fight. So sharp, powerful, accurate straights as opposed to hooks landing to the chest and to the body should not only frustrate Lomachenko, but if he senses any danger to his stamina, Haney can have him second guessing himself in the first half of the fight. And if all goes to plan and Loma is unable to develop his flow state, I believe that's where Haney can switch gears and get back to his fundamentals, leading with the jab on the outside, making the most of his reach and his height, and following up with straights to the head, all the while keeping his distance and stifling Loma's angles by attacking the easiest targets, Loma's arms, chest, and shoulders. Keys to victory for Lomachenko. I think in the early rounds, Loma needs to be really elusive. With a lot of lateral movement, staying on the outside, I expect Loma to double up his jab to the head and to the chest of Haney. Based on their height, Haney's chest will be the easiest location to reach and with that I think Loma really needs to deter Devin Haney from using what fundamentally has always worked for him his one two the odds of that based on physical attributes I think are low if Loma decides to headhunt which I don't think he will I really believe as the smaller man he's going to target the midsection and from his southpaw stance I expect to see a lot of slips to reach his target mentally I can't see Loma breaking Haney he's got far too much confidence 
and momentum on his side. So I think the first seven rounds will be a chess match. Past round seven, if Lomachenko is able to win most of the exchanges, at that point we can safely say he would have found his rhythm. And if Loma is able to hurt Haney in the earlier rounds, we do have to consider Haney's weight cut. He cuts a lot of weight. If Loma can really pull on the pressure in the first seven rounds to where that becomes taxing on Haney's cardio, then there's a chance that Lomachenko can reach that flow state to where he has his opponent marching to the beat of his drum, overthinking how to defend against Loma's inside work and overall elusiveness, then I believe Loma can get a win by a split decision. The thing is, I just think Haney is far too poised at this point in his career for Loma to somehow get a unanimous victory. And on the flip side, I think Loma is too crafty a veteran to lose a clear decision to Devin Haney. Now, with all that being said, I'm leaning towards Lomachenko to win a split decision. And I'll tell you why. Every undefeated fighter, aside from Floyd Mayweather, has that moment in their career where they feel like they're essentially invincible, where they go into a fight riding a high momentum, overly confident, but also utilizing a skill set which has got them to where they are so far. We saw that with Lomachenko until he lost a close decision to Lopez. And then we went on to see that with Lopez when he lost a split decision to Cambosis. And then we saw a new shift of persona with Cambosis, who was now overly confident going into his fight with Haney, again believing in the skill set which got him the victory beforehand and underestimating his opponent. Right now, at this moment, Haney believes in himself. There's a bit more smack talk from Haney, referring to Loma being too old, how he's going to dismantle him. And truth be told, if Haney goes into this fight with the same skill set he brought into the second Cambosis fight, in other words, if he doesn't adapt to the competition, then Loma can win this fight by unanimous decision. You see, in my opinion, Haney looks great in the second fight with Cambosis because Cambosis came into that fight with a new strategy, which after round three just left him like a sitting duck. Haney looked great, but Cambosis looked bad. This is that fight where Haney needs to look at Lomachenko like the big boss not the other way around. Listen, it's going to be a chess match. I'm a personal fan of both fighters. I've tried to keep this relatively objective, but if I were to be biased, Lomachenko, in my opinion, is just a special breed. His unorthodox style, distance keeping, pinpoint accuracy, and entertainment value is a sight to behold. Let me know in the comment sections who you're rooting for and how you think they can achieve that victory. If you enjoyed technical boxing breakdowns, make sure to subscribe. Please give this video a like. Enjoy the fight this weekend, guys. Take care. Peace.